thanks for coming. This is our 13th Seattle Angel Conference. So first up is Dan Lowe with MD Metrics. My name is uh, Daniel Lowe, MD Metrics. So I'm going to take you inside a live operating room. Uh, what we're witnessing here is just the end of a six hour operation. Um, we have an anesthesiologist at the top, Dr. Erica, and under the surgical team led by Dr. Sebastian, they're deep inside someone's neck and they're closing up, coming off the landing. Now at this point, Dr. Erica is, is figuring out, trying to work out, she has two choices, drug A, drug B. She wants to give a good analgesic drug so this patient wakes up comfortable. She's a trainee, so she's only done 10 of these specific cases. And last uh, 10, the, her attending supervisors were split two ways, right down the middle, 50-50. Uh, so she makes an intuit intuitive best guess and goes with drug A. We want to solve that problem and get away from intuition and go to data-driven decisions. How do I know what's going on inside her head? My name is Dr. Daniel Lowe. I'm her mentor. I'm an associate professor in anesthesiology. I was uh, in the OR with her um, during that mission trip in Honduras last month. Uh, so we're going to bring AB testing to clinical medicine, and this is how we're going to do it. So we want our patients uh, to wake up after surgery, I work in pediatric, we want them to look like this guy rather than this little girl. And the only way to do that is to actually get data. Now you can fact check this next statement, so if you have a physician friend, go and ask them right now as I'm talking. Physicians cannot see aggregate data uh, patient outcomes. So if you text your physician friend and say, the last 100 patients you saw with asthma, and you put them on this protocol, can you surface that data and tell me how they did? And was it better this month than it was last month? Is it better this year than it was last year? I guarantee you all of them say, I don't have that data, I don't have that visibility. We want to fix that. Um, the current state of play, I work at Seattle Children's, well-funded, leading uh, research children's hospital. This is how I get data. I have to find an analyst. They go write some code to the data mountain, write some SQL. Once they get that, they pass it to the statistician, they generate a report. It costs $10,000 of time, and it takes 12 to 15 weeks to get a simple answer. Does drug A work better than drug B for patient X? A, that's a 12 to 15 week turnaround. Um, so we want to fix that. How does everyone else do it? So there's a whole bunch of people in tech in this room. So website optimization, Amazon would do it this way. They would just make a change to their website, change it to green, for example. They would decide the metric for success could be conversions, it could be clicks, it could be how long you spend on the website. If, they, if you get a positive uptick, they will accept the change, and there you go. You've made a change, move on. If it doesn't work, you know what doesn't work, move on. We want to bring the same concept, this A-B split testing, to clinical medicine using real-world data. At the moment, it's locked away, buried, and pretty much inaccessible in the EMR. So this is what it looks like. We've built the platform, we've deployed the platform. It's called QI Advisor. It's working in Seattle Children's right now. It's changing how we practice medicine. So this is, uh, on the y-axis is pain. And so the higher up, the more pain you have post-op. The lower down, you have lower pain scores. We made a change in January 2016. And uh, you can now see if you had a child undergoing an ear tube who's aged between two and six, you want them in this group. So you have a 25% reduction in pain. That was invisible to all the clinicians, all the nurses. We couldn't see it because we're too close to the trees to see the forest. Once you surface the aggregate data, it becomes very, very easy. So what is QI Advisor? In a nutshell, it's four physicians who are unable, unable to access that patient data very deep inside the EMR. We're a software platform. We've developed a software platform that surfaces to that real-world data, transforms into real-world evidence, and just tells you this easy, consumable, actual metrics. It tells you what I can do today to make my patient's outcomes better today. Um, totally revolutionary in medicine. So who's on the team? Who's on the team that built this? Uh, so these are the guys that did all the work. Matthew goes in the audience. Uh, Craig and Mike are engineers. These guys used to work together. They're absolutely A-star quality, you know, this agile development team. Chad used to work with these guys well for Global Escape. We're supported by our attorney, our controllers in the audience today. And um, I'm the CEO of trying to stay out of their way. I mean, these guys just know how to rock and write code. I don't, I've never written a single line of code in my life. I'm just a dog. Um, we have this amazing board of directors. Um, Ryan Souza, who came from Amazon and Expedia and Starbucks, is now the chief uh, data officer at Children's and has a deep, deep understanding of analytics in all industries now. Lisa Brandenburg was our president at Children's for 10 years. She's now chief systems officer over at UW Medicine. 
Gordy Nogard, recently retired as the Chief Investment Officer after management fund for 20 years. And we have Brian Phillips, who's the IP Core Director at uh, Children's. Our secret weapon is our Board of Advisors, and we've got some of the Board of Advisors in the audience today. Mike Richards is here, a good friend of mine, cardiac anesthesiologist. Um, Lloyd Provost knows more about data analytics and healthcare than anyone else on the planet. As far as I can look at, he actually wrote a book, The Healthcare Data Guide, mandatory reading for all healthcare analysts. Uh, Travis, a good friend of mine, looked after my kid recently, he's a chief CRNA. And we've got Sam Brown in the audience. Sam's only been mentioned five times indirectly today. So he's the founder of Vices, does the football helmet thing, phenomenally successful uh, neurosurgeon and entrepreneur. And we're really pleased to have him on the team. Um, supported by Children's, uh, these are all the people that, and, and their teams that have supported us, the Head of Clinical Analytics, the Chief Medical Officer, Jeremy R, Chief of Anesthesia, and then the Chief of, uh, Director of Continuous Performance. So we've got a, a whole support crew behind us making this work and supporting this deployment at Children's and really changing how we practice medicine. So can our team deliver? Let me show you what we did. So we had an idea, it's just an idea, back in an idea back in April 2016. By Christmas 2016, we started writing code. Look what happened over 12 months. We went from pilot MVP to general availability in 12 months. That's phenomenally fast and for any software rollouts. We got spun out by Children's. It's the first time they've ever spun out a company. So we've been adding on talent to the team. Biz dev, um, uh, engineering, uh, finance, marketing, and legal. Our, our attorney jumped on in the boat just a couple of months ago. So how big is our market? So hospitals and surgery centers are graded by on a hidden scale. So if you're really tech savvy, you kind of end up at a six or seven. If you're still on paper, you're in the stone age of down here. We have about you know, 2,000 uh, 2, hospitals up, up in the six and sevens. We have about just under 2,000 surgery centers uh, also in the six and seven. So uh, we, we believe we have a, a billion dollar market as hospitals and surgery centers ramp up and develop their warehousing technology and go up the hymns ladder. So why hasn't this happened before? Like, why is this scrappy startup with just four engineers managed to pull off in one year what Epic couldn't do in three or actually five years now? It's all about timing. We're at this stage where we have 100% digitization of um, healthcare records and it's approaching 100%. We're also, five years ago, we couldn't have done it. I think in 10 years' time, it's, it's going to be solved. So I'm kind of asking the question, why not us, why not now, why not right now? We've deployed it, let's scale it. So our competitive landscape, no one else has really done this. The company that could have done this is Epic, a $4.2 billion company. In 2013, big press announcement, they partnered with IBM and the Mayo Clinic. 2018, they don't have a product. They promised they would make the EHR mineable by doctors, hasn't done it in five years. So what's our magic source? Our magic source is clinical context. We have technology analytics and clinical context. We're going after small, highly targeted, focused data sets and are letting physicians slice and dice that. We're also uh, only platform targeted for physicians as the end user. And we have this amazing clinical partnership with Seattle Children's. Um, everyone keeps on asking about moats. What's your moat? What's your moat? I'm going to just quote Elon Musk or let him quote himself. He said, what matters now, today, 2018, is the pace of innovation. We have a really fast team, super agile, and uh, we just want to keep racing ahead with your help. So what's our growth and strategy plan? We learned over the last three months that hospital sales cycles are slow. We got killed by that. So on Friday, we pivoted. We're pivoting to uh, private practice, physician-owned, cost-sensitive, outcomes-driven surgery centers. Um, and we're going to sell them this story. Look, this is from Children's. We looked at, we found one anesthesiologist whose patients get out 10 minutes before everybody else's. Uh, that's a $900,000 saving over three years. We looked at eyeball surgery. Apologize, close your eyes, you don't want eyeballs. Uh, we stopped using IV acetaminophen. We saved $5,000 uh, $5, of drugs per year and $10,000 tons. It's a $15,000 saving we service. We stopped using fentanyl. We stopped contributing to the opioid crisis for ear tubes. We switched to Motrin. That was a 75x reduction in cost of poison the fish. It's all good. So, who can show you a value proposition that saves you money, makes you more efficient? But why do I really care? And why should all of you in this room care? Because one day, you're going to be a patient, okay? And you want your patient, as a doctor, you want your doctor to make a evidence-based decision based on real-world data. You want your doctor to say, based on the data, I'm going to do this for you. You don't want their opinion. My name is Dr. Daniel Lowe. I'm a cancer survivor from 2014, 
and the CEO of Empty Metrics. We need your help to take this to the next stage. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bob Mellon. I'm the uh, diligence lead for MD Metrics, and uh, I've been an investor and advisor to investors in Seattle for 20 plus years, but never been at this level, this grassroots level of the diligence phase. I've consumed thousands of diligence reports, most likely over my career, but to be part of the authorship has been tremendous. So for those folks in the room that threw up their hand when John asked who might be accredited, who's willing to ask, uh, get involved. Talk to John, talk to some of us, and uh, it's a great experience. So that being said, I have a personal connection to this uh, because my youngest son was at Children's and was treated not by Dan, uh, but another member of the team there. And the image that he showed on the screen of the two kids, one really happy in recovery, the other not so much, my son was the not so much. And so there's a, there's a deep connection to this. I want to see better outcomes. When we first started diving into this, we thought this was a a physician-driven solution. This is going to be demand-driven by the physicians, and clearly the traction within Children's has been tremendous. Uh, but what we didn't see until part of the process had, had been underway was that, to your point earlier, this is a cost-saving function as well. So while the physicians may have the demand, the people writing the checks are going to be looking at the bottom line and the ROI, and that's where we're getting. So this is a two-pronged approach. Uh, Another thing we saw was that it was rather shocking to us, and Dan pointed out earlier, was that in spite of the advances in data warehousing and electronic medical records and so on, that it is shockingly hard or impossible to get access to this data. Uh, and this is a solution for that. Um, but we also learned that while the uh, adoption within the hospital is strong, physician demand is tremendous, the healthcare sales cycle is a lot longer than probably any of us would like. Um, so that was probably a validation of that, that concept that we, we already thought was, was there. But to the questions, um, we talked to you about a CEO, because you want to move on. You're, you've got a full-time job, you're a dad, you're a husband, all of that. Uh, talk to us about that strategy so you can move to more of a chief evangelist role. What kind of person are you looking for? We understand that to, for the company to grow and scale, we need a professional CEO. Um, Sam calls it adult supervision, I like that phrase. Um, um, so that I can go back to being a full-time doctor rather than right now as a full-time doctor and a full-time CEO. It's kind of not enough hours in the day. Um, so we are actively looking for that person. We're going to be super picky who we want. We want someone who's passionate about this, not just the bottom line, but just the passion behind the vision of improving outcomes. We want someone who knows health, who knows someone who knows IT, and we want someone who's been in the startup space, who's gone from startup to exit. So if any of you, if that person exists in the room, um, come and hit me up afterwards. Or if you know someone in your network who might be there, please hit me up. Excellent. Uh, being part of or funded by originally uh, within uh, Seattle Children's Research Institute, evolving from that to full-on independent startup, that is a learning curve. That is a process. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, so we were that? very generously funded by Seattle Children's for the first year. In fact, they didn't fund us as a startup. They engaged us as a pro services team. Just to defriction the process, I gave them all the IP, I gave them the idea, and just to say, and just to get us right in code. I just want to get this out there. So my, our lawyer had a total fit when he heard we'd done that. He said, you've just given away the keys to the kingdom. And we made a bet, and I said, look, they, they're engaging us pro services, guns for hire, write the code, and they own the code. Um, we're gonna make a bet, and the bet was uh, that in the year after we do what we say we're gonna do, they love it so much, they will want to uh, spin us out and do a tech transfer. That's exactly what happened in January 2018. So January 2018, we've been on our own. So we had no revenue, no further funding. That's been really hard. Paul Matthew sat there, has not had a paycheck for five months. Our engineers, we eked out what we had left in the bank. Everyone went on half pay, which is well below a third of their market rate right now. And they, and they, and they, 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 you know, they, they keep on working and they keep on developing, refining 1.0, uh, writing code for 2.0. Um, it's pretty amazing. Uh, the guys, there's no flight risk with these guys. They are so engaged with writing code that actually changes people's lives. So we want to get funded. We want to 
put them back on that just below medium salary until um, until our revenue justifies jumping it up. We understand the optics. We understand that as investors do not want to pay for us to play startup. So every, everyone on the team understands that I've never had a salary. I will never take a salary um, until our revenue will justify that. Um, so um, we're in it for the long haul. So on the uh, on the revenue front speaks to the last question. Traction's been stronger than Seattle Children's, but moving on through the realities of the rest of the healthcare space and how you're going to get traction elsewhere, you've just had a big win this week, and not to bring up a name that has been mentioned several times today, but you want to speak to the uh, business yeah. development side as well. Dr. Brown's been a tremendous addition to the team. We're, as I said, he's uh, responsible for our new business strategy, targeting ambulatory surgery centers. Coincidentally, that many of them are owned by neurosurgeons who happen to be in his network. So we're already teeing up two or three conversations next week to go talk to them. Sure. All right, thank you. Hi, I'm John Seacrest, the founder of the Seattle Angel Conference. We help people learn how to be effective angel investors through experiential training.